Hello everyone, I'm Ram Kumar Jagadeesan. I'm a graduate student under Dr. Jessica Gran at Western University. Our study is on spontaneous intrapersonal synchrony and the effect of cognitive load. Spontaneous synchronization is a common phenomenon in humans. Uh, it's called a spontaneous interpersonal synchronization because it occurs between individuals. It occurs in dyads, for example, where two people spontaneously synchronize their footsteps when walking together. It occurs even in large audiences where applause is often spontaneously synchronized. Spontaneous synchronization increases with the exchange of sensory feedback between individuals. Uh, the modality of the feedback can be visual, where partners can see each other, or auditory, where they can hear each other, or tactile, where, for example, they are holding hands. Tactile feedback has been the most potent in triggering spontaneous synchronization. So to quickly summarize, uh, exchange of sensory feedback between individuals causes coupling of their periodicities, integrating them into a single system. And this triggers spontaneous synchronization. Uh, this, uh, and such spontaneous synchronization is interpersonal because it is between individuals. Given that our study is on spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization, why am I talking about interpersonal synchronization? Two reasons. One, there is not a lot of literature, in fact, hardly any literature on spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization. And two, interpersonal and intrapersonal synchronization are observably similar in terms of what they are trying to achieve. That is to reduce multiple periodicities into one so that there's, there is just one periodicity to track instead of multiple. Given that, here we ask the question, what if the periodicities were produced by the same individual? like this gentleman, for example, walking and clapping at the same time. As an individual, he's a single system by default. So does that mean coupling and exchange of sensory feedback are satisfied by default as prerequisites? If they are, then it would be reasonable, we thought, to expect spontaneous inter intrapersonal synchronization to occur within individuals. So there is also evidence showing that musicians combine two unrelated beats into one composite pattern rather than tracking them independently. For example, like this guy here, the musicians in the study listen to two tracks, but combine them to perceive them as one, reducing multiple periodicities into one. This is like intrapersonal synchronization, we thought, but between perceived periodicities. So our question was, could this tendency extend beyond perception into production? One more thing we considered uh, that could be in play here was cognitive load. Coben and colleagues actually predict spontaneous interpersonal synchronization to increase under high cognitive load in order to conserve resources. This prediction is supported by the fact that in dual task paradigms involving a periodic task and a cognitive task, both tasks actually suffer performance degradation. And this is possibly due to dual task interference uh, according to the central capacity sharing model. We therefore decided to test this prediction by Cobra and colleagues on spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization. Therefore, we arrived at two hypotheses. One, periodic behaviors by an individual spontaneously become more synchronous when simultaneous than when separate. And spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization increases under high cognitive load. For our study, we had 24 participants, 10 males and 14 females. Most of them were Western students and a few of them were from the general populace. We had two experiments. Experiment one had finger tapping and walking as periodic tasks and uh, counting backwards as the cognitive uh, task to induce additional cognitive, lo cognitive load. And there were two levels of difficulty here counting backwards in threes or in sevens. For experiment two, we still had finger tapping as task one. And for task two, we used ticking, which is just vocalizing the word tick repetitively, like going tick, tick, tick over and over again. And for cognitive task, we had visual pattern matching that had six uh, levels of uh, difficulty from, uh, from uh, four block patterns to nine block patterns. 
For design, we had six task conditions across three load stages. The preload stage here refers to before inducing additional cognitive load through the cognitive task. The load stage refers to when the cognitive load was induced and the post load stage uh, refers to after the removal of cognitive load. Hypothesis one was tested during the preload stage and the postload stage, both of which had the same two conditions, single task and dual task, but in opposite order for counterbalancing as shown here in this table. Here conditions one and two were preload and conditions five and six were postload. Also the order in which the single tasks were performed were counterbalanced across the preload and postload stages. For example, tapping single task was performed first in the preload stage and last in the postload stage. This was for both experiments. Hypothesis two was tested during the load stage, which was conditions three and four. Both conditions three and four ran continuously as a single trial, with first half being condition three when subjects performed both periodic tasks simultaneously without the cognitive task but waiting to start the cognitive task at the halfway mark of the trial, and hence the name dual plus expecting load for condition three. From, from the halfway mark onwards until the end of the trial, they followed condition four, performing the cognitive task along with both periodic tasks, and hence the name of the condition dual plus enduring load. Both experiments followed the same design as shown here in the table. The metric we used to measure synchronicity was phase coherence. For each trial, for each periodic task, we measured the uh, number of repetitions, momentary rates, and the time differences that the periodic task had with the corresponding repetitions of the other task. Here, corresponding rep uh, repetitions refer to those that are temporarily the most proximal. We then calculated relative phase angles for each trial, for each periodic task, as the product of time differences and momentary rates. We then multiplied that by two pi to convert them into radians so that we could uh, apply the global order parameter of the Kuramoto model given here to calculate the phase coherence value given by R that falls between zero and one. One referring to total synchrony and zero meaning absolutely no synchrony at all. Results revealed a significant increase in phase coherence. This is for hypothesis one, of course. Uh, increase in phase coherence during dual task compared to single task, supporting hypothesis one for experiment one. And the same was for experiment two. So in both experiments, the phase coherence during dual task was significantly higher than, than it was during single task. No significant difference in phase coherence was found between preload and postload stages. No significant interaction effect was found between single task, du uh, dual task, and preload, postload stages. For hypothesis two, results revealed a significant decrease in phase coherence during enduring load compared to expecting load, not supporting hypothesis two for experiment one as well as for experiment two. No significant difference in phase coherence was found across load levels, except for ticking in experiment two. Uh, no significant interaction effect was found between load condition and load level. So in summary, the main result was spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization between periodic tasks was significantly higher when the tasks were produced simultaneously compared to separately, this supported hypothesis one, of course. And what we think based on this is spontaneous interpersonal and intrapersonal synchronization may be the same uh, phenomenon, but just different manifestations as they seem to be sharing the same underlying mechanism. And another, the other main uh, result was spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization was significantly lower while enduring additional cognitive load compared to when no such load was endured. And uh, this was not in support of hypothesis one or two, in fact, was uh, absolutely the opposite. And also spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization was significantly different across load levels for the ticking task. We thought like this was possibly due to cognitive load during dual task interference, as explained by central capacity sharing model uh, that we talked about a few slides ago.
For future directions, we mainly suggest avoiding uh, possible cognitive uh, uh, cognitive overload effects, uh, using easier tasks and clearer instructions to reduce intrinsic and extraneous load, uh, and that could be a good place to start. And given that this is a within subjects paradigm, customizing cognitive load manipulations for each participant would be ideal. A literature sub uh, recommends pre-experiment assessment of cognitive load capacity for each participant. As always, further testing with larger samples will, be, uh, will better inform the findings of this study. Also, wider age ranges in samples will facilitate analysis for effect of age. Lastly, the musician-non-musician -musician split in our sample was lopsided. Four musicians out of 24 participants. Uh, that rendered any analysis for effect of musical training uh, ineffective. Therefore, we suggest testing a better balanced sample in that regard for uh, effect of musical training on spontaneous intrapersonal synchronization. These are our references, and I would like to thank Dr. Jessica Grahn. Uh, it's been absolutely wonderful working with her, and also Dr. Blake Butler and Dr. Ryan Stevenson for their input, and also all the uh, all my lab mates at, at Grahn Lab, and everybody at the Brain and Mind Institute at Weston, and also NSERC. Thank you, and I'll be happy to take any of your questions.